Another city builder. That's right. It's banished with beavers. It's boy do I love beavers the game. <laughs> Super hyper intelligent beavers. Beavers, beavers, beavers. I have uh, like 23 hours in Timberborn now because I wanted to make sure that I had a pretty good grasp of the game. Uh, so a couple things kind of reared their ugly heads or whatever uh, after my first 20 hours or so. And I'm glad I put a little bit more time because I was able to, to experiment a little bit with some of the uh, more more uh, um, challenging difficulties. And that allowed me to, uh, to have a better grasp of how the difficulty scales in this game. Because uh, at first I was like, wow, man, I did 20 hours and I'm kind of done. Uh, but no, I am not. <laughs> so Timberborn is a colony builder, city builder, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it is an early access. There is a significant amount of content in the game. Um, it is very, very uh, well off for an early access title. Uh, and the way I'm going to do things today is I want to uh, start off with a new game just briefly. And then I will switch to two other games that I have ongoing. Uh, and so that way you could see the differences between the two factions that are released. Uh, as well as just different build types and different challenges and everything. One's normal modes, one's hard mode. So it's going to be an exciting day. We're going to go through, we're going to see a little bit of everything. Uh, there's also a create map and edit map feature. I've not played with these yet, um, but I've seen some of the work that people have done in the uh, in the Discord. Uh, and some of those things, some of the things that people are come up, come up, coming up with is credible. Um, also in our very own Discord, we have uh, Beaver Bros, uh, one of the many channels we have for some of the games that we play. Uh, and there's a lot of people in, in, in our community Discord that are playing it as well. It's just a very fun game. It's very... Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's fun. <laughs> it's banished with beavers, man. But, but, you know, it goes, it goes a step further, man, because it focuses on the water. Of course, it's a beaver colony sim. You, you, if you have to nail the water thing, right? You have to nail the water thing. So let's talk about that new game. Here we go. We have folk tales and then we have iron teeth. Uh, we're going to go with the uh, folk tales because we're only going to sit in this thing for just a minute. There are differences between these two. I'll talk about that once I jump into the more advanced uh, gameplay sessions that I have. Uh, let's see, we have mountain range, terraces. These are all preset. You start in the same spot. Uh, so if somebody wants to challenge you and say, hey, go to diorama and try this and that, whatever, uh, then that would be an even playing field. Um, let me see. A thousand islands, waterfall. Waterfall sounds cool. Let's go there. So next. Uh, so there's easy, normal, hard, and custom. So... Let's go over custom so you could just see the different things that you can, uh, how different ways that you could scale the difficulty. So, it, which is basically infinite. Uh, so starting adults, seven aged, 10% uh, to 80% basically just means 10% to 80% of their lifespan, right? Um, so it could be r random. <laughs> so you could get in and have somebody die within like, I think probably uh, two cycle weeks or whatever. So probably like two weeks. Um, let me see, food consumption, 100%, water consumption. This is basically the rate that they consume foods. Pretty you know, self-explanatory, starting food, self-explanatory, starting water, self-explanatory. Uh, temperature, weather duration, uh, is a, a temp temperate weather duration, 13 to 17 days. Uh, and then a drought duration, five to nine days. So uh, this, I would say that just looking at this and having played the, the different difficulty modes, I would say this is probably normal mode. Uh, because hard mode, the, the droughts are insane. Um, and so we're not going to do that right now. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go normal mode strictly as I can show you around and, uh, we'll get a little thing started. You could see how the game plays, the different, uh, UI elements and all that. All right. Here's our dudes. We start off with, uh, seven adults and four children. The children, um, when they reach day cycle six of their life, uh, six or seven, uh, then they will turn into adults. So the first thing you want to do is want to go through and lay out some some roads. So you give them some uh, some things to walk on and we want to path this out to here. Let's explore a little bit, though. Look at till this camera. I have the camera unlocked so that way I'm not locked. Oh, wasn't this waterfalls? There's like, I mean, okay, 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 yeah, there's there's some waterfalls. It was, I, I just, I guess I just expected like a nice, really tall waterfall. <laughs> I expect like Niagara Falls, not like this. All right, well, you know, it's something. Um, so something to look at here is the way that the water, again, the water is the thing that they really, really nailed in this. And for a beaver simulator, like you have to do that. Um, there's a lot of damming that you have to do. Uh, notice that there's, uh, there's some green all the way around this, right? Some lush. Uh, lush land that you could build on and grow stuff on and it's all surrounding the water if the water dries up during a drought all of this turns to this 
Okay, not well, not that's ruins and stuff. So, but basically, it turns to this. Um, now it doesn't just wipe everything out. You everything gets like a timer that will say, you know, it's uh, like this is oh, it's watered and alive. It would say uh, it's dry and dying, and it'll die in like ten cycles. I think I think pine trees will last like probably twelve cycles or something like that with no water. But um, these things, the blueberries, will will not last that long. Um, so the guys have nothing to do right now. They're just kind of standing around like, okay. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just set up a couple of, uh, first with the basics, right? So we get some water, we get some water storage. Uh, and what we'll do, what I usually like to do when I get in is just basically start building some stuff. Like start uh, pathing things out with it paused and then come back um, and hit it with, uh, and then let everything, just let them just go ham on everything. So we're going to click this and go and just basically highlight everything. This is actually a really easy start, man. Wow. <laughs> Having played this game on such hard difficulty, this is amazing. All the resources are right here in the water. I chop. Basically, what I would do is I would chop all of this down, um, and probably set up a forester to just keep this area nice and clean, right? Uh, or keep that area like basically replanting the trees and all that stuff, and then just have all this farmland, and then just put all the homes and everything out here where like you don't necessarily need to have fertile land. Uh, wow, this is crazy. So we want to set up a couple flags. So we set up a flag here, uh, and this is basically this is for um uh, uh a flat a lumberjack flag basically means that they're gonna somebody's gonna occupy this you'll see that in a minute here uh, once it's built you'll see somebody will occupy and then they will um speed things up uh and then they'll just start chopping so there they go you ain't gonna go boy you ain't gonna go i wonder if it's because uh it's too far away from the from the road i bet it is they're so picky about roads <laughs> seriously so picky about roads all right so let's go and highlight this we'll take some roads out I'll probably get started yeah maybe um let me go here and then uh let them go let me see what's going on here why is he not let me see cut yeah it's set to cut and then this is uh lumberjack flag yeah there you go no goods in stock where's homeboy at what's he doing oh he is doing oh i didn't see him he snuck away down here man sneaky boy all right <laughs> uh let me see so already you start with a dam okay like being being able to go through and build a dam so i could take a dam and i could say builds all the way across here it'll stop the water um from flowing up to a certain point there's a spillway right let me click on this here you can see there's a gap right so the spillway will allow the water to go over before it floods all of your land yes you can flood your land and it could the water physics in this thing are fantastic oh look at this look at this oh this is great look at this thing okay let's demolish this guy real quick we'll set this thing to this i wonder if it's too far away someone will go over there that road's right there right so we'll go over there Right, 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 right. No one's gonna go over there. Boy, what you gonna do, man? Come on, y'all embarrass me in front of the family. Um, let me see. Let me go and get some pathing to get a little bit closer. Like, like I said, they're really picky about paths. Oh, look at this nice. It's a nice clear path all the way there. And there. Someone will go get that now. There he goes. And then he basically chooses up, chooses up, and the water will flow and look at all this extra beautiful land we had that we could grow stuff on amazing uh, and then once we keep this and what if we keep this dam this is a lot of water that we could, we could work with uh i would probably if i was actually playing so i'd probably take this and dam it a little bit further upstream strictly to uh make a, a more a larger pool of water available to me to to siphon out of so i could keep my uh keep my beavers alive during a drought but this being basically easy mode it's not really that big of a deal uh gather same thing so gather a flag someone's gonna build this and they're gonna come over here and start gathering all this stuff up you don't have to tell them to do it uh the way to tell them to do is cut usually what i do is i'll go through and i'll just flag basically everything uh like this just to make sure that i never like if, if i move to another zone um i won't forget because sometimes i'll like build lumberjacks and i'm just like why are you cutting the trees and it's like oh i didn't tell them to cut uh <laughs> housing you can build lodges for them and this is the beauty of this game is that you can stack things and get really creative with the way that you build your bases uh now granted i don't have the technology to be to build uh stairs that go up uh or anything like that but um well it's you know it's uh it's possible <laughs> eventually you could build skyscrapers and they could get really tall like i think we did a test on stream it was like 25 or something like that uh like 25 stacks tall uh just absurd say so notice notice again going back to ui things you know this guy is like oh Oh, God, you got little stats right here. Thirst. 
right? So this guy's thirsty. Well, I just set this thing up so it's going to start pouring water out for the for the homies here, and then uh, they'll be fine. Uh, and this will end up holding water once they have, get around to uh, to building it. What you'd probably do in a situation like this is put, put more lumberjack flags. We have three unemployed people in the uh, over here in the upper left corner, uh, so you want to get them employed and doing stuff. So I'd probably go like this. Let's go like uh, let's see, boom. I should move this over a little bit, mm, and then move this one a little bit further this way. There, and then that'll take care of that. These are pretty far. I'm willing to bet this doesn't go all the way over there. Yeah, it does not. Uh, so I'd probably set up another one of these. Um, maybe like, I don't know, here. And then I'll grab this road and just bring it down here. So we're on our way already to... I mean, this is this this guy. I mean, on more normal mode, um, this is already going to be, <clears throat> you know... Um, like pretty easy to, to overcome any any small droughts uh things start getting tricky when you start getting into the balance of whether uh, of, of uh of them reproducing so uh this faction will um will reproduce normally right if you give them a house they will populate that house with a, with a children or the child sorry i was reading this uh with a child so you have to um you have to be careful <laughs> because the more houses you give them uh, then the, you know the more they can expand and etc etc etc. I'm if you guys have been around for a while, you probably see me play. Uh, you probably see me play uh, Banish, so you know how how uh, in how quickly things get out of control with population and whatnot. So we're gonna stop this right here. Everything's pretty much. I mean, this is a great start. It's super easy. Uh, we would just turn around. We already built the um, you know the log pile, so stuff can come here. The next thing I'd probably build is uh, is a small warehouse, and so I'd put this like right here. And then maybe another on top, another one, another one. Just keep on stacking things. And you, you actually kind of lop, lop, lopside them a little bit if you wanted to. If you wanted to get kind of weird with it, you could do that. And then you could take and squeeze like a house in the middle or something. Look at this. See? Like the possibilities. I mean, it's it's Legos, man. Like it's, There's even a house this big, actually, that you could go through and get. The mini lodge here, but I don't have any science points. So let's talk about science points. But first, let's switch to the other save and see what... It looks like when you have several several hours into one single playthrough so this is the one that i did this is the save that i played uh or the colony that i managed on stream uh pretty much all this past week um and it's uh, i mean it was a lot of fun i think pe people really enjoyed watching it i mean you guys know that i love these games so i think people like watching when i play something i enjoy <laughs> and so i'll give you guys a tour here so you could see just how how i've developed this and and how uh, uh how you expand because when you first get started you think oh this is easy man i got my colony going super super simple but that's just one district i have three districts i have district prime district do-over and then wet and wild so to talk a little bit about the way the districts are set up uh so this is a district building here right this is the starter building recognize it from the other safe i uh, notice it has a range on it it has a limited range so the district doesn't just because you have map doesn't mean you could build anywhere you have to slowly expand uh, or find a way to um uh, to move and hop districts to get to another location and so for example i needed to get some of this metal so i could use metal to compress into little squares or whatever and then use that to make i think gears or something right isn't that gears let me see uh is it gears no it's woods for gears uh let me see what do i make for the metal i don't even know um <laughs> <laughs> let's go to metal here uh, let me see uh, i bet i bet the um yeah here we go so though this takes gears and paper and paper god there's so many things that you can make uh anyway so over here Here's another district. This is District Do Over. Uh, it was District Three because District Two failed. Uh, we, I think, we forgot about it, and everybody starved to death. Um, and you could see that District Three or District, well, sorry, uh, uh, District Do Over has its own um, reach, right? So this gives me, this gives me the ability to come out here and and reach these resources. So the way it works is this district district has its own count. It has um, thirteen. Uh, population no kids uh, they have their own little houses boom 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 i think they have uh some houses over here uh small warehouse now where's the other house at let me see the shredder the shredder making this metal blocks uh i thought i had more than just these three. Oh yeah over here oh it's right we're building another one another triple lodge so here's a triple lodge right here it houses a number of people and then we're gonna build another triple lodge right here uh, right now actually and then that will allow them to um uh continue to expand and grow although they're not doing oh they're not doing anything because i don't have anything to do um so what i would what i would do right now is actually probably go through and give these guys something to do for leisure so we'll say like we'll do like this right and then we'll build let me see 
I don't build, I've seen people build like really, really high. There's so much space to work with that I haven't really felt the need to build up, up, up like crazy. I've stacked a few things for sure. And you'll see that in the other area. And even right here, like little things when it's convenient, right? Like a warehouse underneath a factory uh, and such like that. Um, but I haven't really gone ham with like building towers or anything like that. Walls and stuff like that for retainers and whatnot. Yes, which you'll see it actually in a minute. So let me see, go hit this, boom. And then we'll just run this road to it done and then that's their leisure area so what will happen is these guys will go they'll get the metal they'll come over here they'll turn into metal blocks right and then they'll store those metal blocks in storage uh and then they'll take them over to i think to to here they, so their job is to take where is it at this guy here so this building the distribution post i have uh, uh to district prime which is obviously the number one district uh you have add a new route so i click on this this is district primes um uh receiving point and i would say okay let's go ahead and take these guys like some you know paper or something so okay and now they're gonna bring paper over now i'm not generating paper on this side but i can uh but if i was and i could export it there so you end up setting up the you end up doing a lot of like logistical work which is really really cool and very unique to this game i mean well not exclusively to this game but i mean compared to some of the other um games i played i think oxygen occluded was probably the most recent one that actually added a sort of logistic system where you're moving things around um almost officially between asteroids or whatever uh and so same thing over here these guys have a ton they have uh 10 uh oh they have eight they they used to have 10 but they're exporting stuff all over the place and it's it's the the reason why you want to do this is because once these guys are getting started, you want to help them get on their feet and become self-sufficient. And so, for example, over here with Wet and Wild, uh, this district, which by the way, the districts are separated by these little gates, which this gate is like way in here. Here it is. There it is. Look at that. Look at that guy. Look at that. That's the gate right there. So this basically uh, uh, denotes the, a crossing from one district to another right there. So... Uh, by the way, unlock your camera when you get in the game. I, I can't remember how the other one was, but I know it was not anywhere near this flexible. So please unlock your camera when you do get in the game. First thing, that's the first thing you're going to do, okay? Um, so these guys, this is all built on water. Uh, I built a dam all the way down here to keep this water uh, contained. This is a huge amount of water. I basically solved the water issue, like permanently because of this uh this district once I click on here it's gonna it's gonna update it's gonna show me that this district has 16 people living there two children 14 adults uh they have their own you know small warehouse there let me see where's the there's a house i think underneath here triple lodge it's un partially underwater uh which is pretty cool they don't seem to mind that uh par partially underwater i have a pretty big job right now having all these things lined up so they can uh what i want to do is because there's not really a whole lot of usable land uh, i want to build everything out on on platforms so i end up building a ton of platforms it takes time but you know uh these guys are going to sit here and work on it um endlessly because they're just getting a, a constant supply of wood from uh district prime over here um so <laughs> so like just to kind of go through some of the other buildings let's go like like your, your more essential starter building so like here's your forester all right and so the forester will will put down a will anything within range um like so for example this area here all i have to i don't necessarily have to say okay forester you go do this i just basically say okay i'm gonna go and just say uh let me see plant trees and bushes so i could i could do any one of these four things the forester will maintain for you so if i want to say uh let's get some maples maples um we'll pull this out here then boom they'll do it let me go and actually cut that there we go oops a little bit too much uh and so he'll go through and he'll he'll come down he's already down um yeah he's right there actually and he'll start working on it and he'll build out uh or he'll he'll build a nice little orchard there for you uh and then he'll maintain that you know other people will come down and they'll chop it down he that's not his job his job is not to come through and chop things down his job is to just keep things planted and then once the, the trees are chopped down, chopped down he'll clean it up and he'll replant and everything so that's the use the usefulness of of a forester cannot be understated uh it really or overstated it really is um uh something that you need to make sure you get out the door very quickly to replenish your resources and also because blueberries are very very valuable uh and, and they grow very very quickly um let me see uh they have a couple farm plots here they're working on it you know uh this this uh, there's a bee thing this thing will speed up anything within its range here uh i actually have a couple of them set up here with my wheat fields uh check this out right here uh and this is actually kind of fun there is there is a uh, explosive it's under landscaping and i always forget because it's such a funny place to put it uh explosives are fucking awesome 
uh, because they they explode. There's, I mean, it's not like a huge explosion or anything, but it will do work. Uh, let me just go and blow something up here so you can see. Let's just do like like this. It'll probably take a minute. We'll do like this. There you go. And then we'll just let that run pretty quickly. I think we have the resource for it. Let me see. Do I have resources? Yeah, I have 110 explosives. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're totally good. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna keep this save anyway. Am I gonna keep this save? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so um, let me see. Uh, yeah, what I did again, just make making taking advantage of the fact that I can build on stilts to keep all these homes off the ground and not on fertile land, right? Uh, this message just basically means that this thing is full. So the warehouse is full, the water's full, all that stuff. These guys export water, I think, right? Let me see. Just yeah, they send water to District Prime. Um, they could they could technically also uh, wheel some water over to these guys if I wanted to, like if they needed water, but they don't need water. They have their own pumps and everything. Yeah. It's a small colony over here, so they don't really need too much. When I click on nothing, um, like basically not clicking on any one of these individual ones, you can see my total resources that I have. You can see there's a ton of, of jobs, a ton of buildings. I don't even have everything up. I have 18 people unemployed across the entire land, not just this one district. So I click on this, six people here unemployed, over here, six people over there unemployed, and I guess, wow, six people in each one unemployed? Oh, four people. Oh, four people in this one. Um... Over here at the bottom of the corner, you can see when people die of old age or they grow up and all that. Like I said, one cycle is pretty much all they need. Power usage. Uh, so some things require power. There's a couple different ways to get power. You can get power from a wheel and having somebody in a hamster wheel. Uh, you can have water being uh, being powered by um, by by wheels. Okay, there you go. Power. Sorry, <laughs> a little repetitive there. Um, and that's only going to work if you have flow. So if there's a drought, guess what? No flow. And so you have to have somebody hop on the wheel. That's why I have a backup power for each one. There's also wind power. You can see that up here. It doesn't matter if you have this. Have these. Um, we tested this earlier. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have these windmills up on top of a mountain or anything like that. They seem to do work exactly the same. Um, but anyways, yeah. So but it, there's not always not always windy. So again you still want some kind of redundant power supply now up here I, this has been running pretty smoothly just off of like one dude here and then a couple of wind things but like right here like there's no wind so it's not gonna work but it's nighttime so you know they're not it doesn't really matter uh, speaking of nighttime i could actually work make them work a little bit longer increase the working hours if i wanted to uh that's uh that's a uh um a thing that i could do i could basically crank this all the way up and they will get no sleep and they will not eat and they will not drink if you do that so you have to be careful you have to allot them enough time for personal for personal things um let me see what else uh yeah so talking speaking about explosives uh i i built this by explode by basically blowing it out um and then keeping it nice and deep so if there was a drought it wouldn't necessarily empty this entire thing it's just too much water in it in a drought even if you're not pumping water water is still evaporating so there is like an evaporating mechanism the water in this game is so well done look at this look at this flow right and this is i this is my dam so if i want to take this let's see synchronize let's see synchronize is a zero okay and this one is one okay this one is one okay this is i especially set this up to slow it down just enough to give me this flow but if I take this and I raise it up, and then I take this and I raise it up, um, let me see. Oh, oh, I went off the screen. That's why. Yeah, if you go off the screen, it will, it will reset it. So now there's no flow, and this water is going to start building up, and eventually it's actually going to flood the land. Uh, and I'll leave that on there so you can see it. Um, what's going on with this, guys? What's going on here? Let's get our priorities, P9, all this stuff. What's up with that? They have the resources. They just aren't getting to it. There they go. Someone's dropping. Well, maybe not. We'll see. Um, let me see. What else is there? God, there's so many things. There's so many things. So as I was playing this, here's some of the... So first off, uh, actually, let's talk a little bit about some of the issues that, I, that um, I've come across. Uh, first, there was a difficulty issue, and, I was then, and now I'm like, okay, that's not even a problem anymore because the difficulty scales wildly, um, and it will fuck you up. Uh, but one thing the game is missing is stats. There's no statistics that allow me to see trends. Um, I do like seeing, uh, you know, playing almost Eve style, having a whole bunch of, of, uh, of data sheets up or data, um, panels and whatnot. Endzone did a pretty good job of keeping all that stuff, uh, hidden and keeping the actual game window pretty clean. And then you just hit buttons to kind of switch between different overlays and whatnot. This game does not have any overlays, so I can't see 
Um, I can't see like water levels. I can't see how many units of water is in here, right? And this flow, I can't see. Um, there's this just, I can't see the trend of food. All I, all I could do is look up and see, okay, let me see. Well, I can see the drop down. This is my breakdown of food here, but I can't see how it's trending. So that's something that I hope they add later. Uh, any kind of overlay that shows any kind of information, maybe heat maps where they're walking, uh, stuff like that. Um, like for example, when I click on this, it shows me this, right? Uh, it would be nice if there was like an overlay that showed me more information than just this. Uh, but you all, but you do get some pretty good stuff. I mean, like when I look at this right here, look, look at these lines, these lines indicate how far, um, this warehouse can be serviced from right does that make sense uh so you could see that you know this if well if, if if i had uh not you see right here it ends right before this gate so if i had a building right here that i was exporting something to a warehouse then i would um i would be out of range of that warehouse uh so he says upper right corner he's beeping at me 2.9 days until the next drought and speaking of droughts i think it's time to switch over to my other save and see what's going on over there because that is drought fucking city Good morning! Welcome to the diorama map, which is a tiny little map. <laughs> just a tiny... Let's hide this. Look at this. It's this cute little map that you can build on, and I'm playing on hard mode with the Iron Teeth faction. Um, it is... Uh, it is a struggle. It is seriously a struggle. The droughts last for... I think I had a 20-something day drought. That I hit with and I survived, but I only survived because of how I built out these, um, basically how I flooded certain chunks of land and uh, over here, I've raised the, the riverbed wall, uh, to allow me to hold more water. It's insane. The amount of stuff that I have to do in order to make this, um, in order to make this chunk of land here, uh, this tiny little chunk of land here, survivable, just survivable. I don't even have houses for i think anyone i mean let me see homeless i have 18 people and they're all homeless they all sleep on the ground uh i don't have houses anywhere i just, <laughs> there's just there's such a fine balance and i'm 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 at the i am constantly almost dying uh like almost wiping completely that um i haven't even sat down to build out a place for them to to sleep uh i'm thinking eventually i'm gonna do it out here if you look here this is a pretty big project so all of this is gonna be flat eventually and it's gonna allow me to build houses and such out there i might actually just abandon this play this playthrough just to get through a um or just to go to a uh, a better um start and just try to start over and maybe even record a series for this i think i mean i think that's probably a given i'm going to record a series for this for sure uh probably on hard mode too because it is such a challenge i am uh at cycle 12 i think the other one was cycle 16 and i'm so far behind on technology because i'm generating science through this the inventor box the inventor uh building uh and i have so many things i'm trying to unlock but it's hard man because you, like i said it's about I don't even have homes for these guys let alone like you know re uh, researching a ton of crap and having it available to me uh, i i have basic stuffs available like for example a levy um <clears throat> and then also these these floodgates that allow me to adjust the height i have a bunch of those as well um <laughs> it's, it's just it's just been it's just been a struggle on this one and so the difference between uh these guys and the other faction is and there's tons of tons of notifications all over the place a notification that's missing by the way is when there's no anybody employed somewhere so if i find something that has no employees uh like if you're short short uh short-handed it will not actually tell you on the overlay that there's somebody missing okay now i can't find one that's not manned <laughs> everything is manned of course well you get the point anyways every building makes sounds anyways so uh <laughs> come on it's gonna be one ah there it is all right no unemployed beavers in district see and there's no notification that to tell me there's nobody working there so i get that's something else that's probably going to come in the future but those those very minor things for a game uh in early access like seriously it's like hey you're missing a notification for this this status like that's a pretty small thing <laughs> so that's a good sign right in my opinion that's a good sign um i'm utilizing like every chunk of the of the land here trying to make sure i have a steady stream of resources uh i'm keeping my population pretty small because there's just not a lot of water here there's there's a drought coming in three days and what i probably will do is kind of speed things up 
uh, I probably just add it right to uh, to the drought so you guys can see what that looks like. And let's do that right now, actually. The drought is coming in about 0.4 days, so basically after this next night. But I wanted to go ahead and show you guys how you plug some of these things in to get them uh, uh, to get them powered and whatnot. So uh, this is a um, this is a powered unit. It was power connection block. Okay. Uh, this is a uh, this is a gas station. Or sorry, an engine, uh, a gas engine or wood engine, um, and it is unique to this faction, the Iron Teeth faction. So they can generate their own power off of wood. Now, uh, I have a lot of excess wood, so this is probably a good time to do this. I didn't really have a lot of buildings that need power, though, before, right? Basically, I just have this windmill, here, or sorry, this, uh, this running wheel, and I have the water wheel um, powering the lumber mill to get me uh, to get me planks, and that's pretty much it. So over here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start setting up my gear workshop and everything else that's going to require power. Uh, the gear workshop and a couple other things will require this. And you see that there's a little output here, right? Now, I, I should be able to, it doesn't, not really giving me a notification here but i'm supposed to be able to take this um this guy here and just put it next to it and build it next to it like this and then that's gonna have power like that's all it takes um and i'll go ahead and start this and we'll run a road out here and everything run a path because like i said they're picky with paths um so this is a unique this is unique to this faction uh, other things that are unique to this faction is they don't breed uh like like the other faction does. They don't breed normally. Traditionally, I'll say. <laughs> I'll try to think of the word for it. Um, they breed in these... These breeding pods. This is the only way they can breed. Which is kind of nice. Because it makes it easy to control the population. I've only had these three going. And every once in a while I'll just pause when I feel like... They're, if it's getting a little out of control. Like if it's a really long drought or something like that. They These things take water and berries. So I would probably kick it off... Uh, just to just to let it you know let it rise or so make sure I have enough water. Um, let me see. We can always set priority on these things too. Uh, this thing needs uh, oh it needs gears. Ah how funny it needs gears and I have to build the damn gear thing. Oh that's freaking amazing. So that means I do have to put a wheel out here. <laughs> so we're not gonna show the I'm not gonna be able to show you guys this today. Uh, let's go ahead and delete it. Let's go ahead and delete it. Now here's the thing that sucks. You see those 15 logs and and, and uh, one plank here one plank. Okay one plank here. Notice I have no planks. Okay if I delete this. I don't get those planks back. Once they're committed to a job, it's gone. Like that's it. Like that's that you don't get those back. Um, let me see the road. Get this thing. Uh, 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 this. Oh, yeah, I'm not gonna do, clean all that up. I'll just restart this save. Uh, let me see something else here. Oh, so this is a 20. Just a 20, 21 day, or was it 22 day? I, I lost track. Uh, I didn't even notice that we we're in a in a drought because of the um, because of how much water I have banked. Right, all this is happening here. I have a water meter tell me that the water level is a 1.53. I should take this and raise it up actually. Um, yeah, it's at a one. Okay, cool. Uh, and then this thing, this is basically just holding back uh, three times the amount of water uh, in this area. So this this will help me get through. I'll, I'll make it through the 20 days, no problem. Um, yeah, I'll definitely make it through the 20 days. My my body count is pretty low, 19, um, and the uh, and the extra water that I have, yeah, 20 days is not a problem. Killer though, like before, uh, like earlier, because before I didn't have this. This was just this little river. You see this river under here? That's all I have is this river. As a matter of fact, let me go and take this little drag it all the way down so you have a better view. Uh, you could see the original river here. That was all I had on this side. Um, and so I was pumping water like crazy from the river. I blocked it off, right? I was pumping water like crazy from the river, and then the longer droughts were just killing me because I just could not get the water. I could not get enough water out of this. And then once the land dries up, then everything over here starts to die. So as a matter of fact, you know what? Since we're just restart this anyways, I'm gonna go and show you guys. Let's go ahead and empty out this water. And and let's get crazy. Let's go ahead and take this guy and let's load all the way and we'll let this water just come pouring out. You'll see how the water physics kind of, they 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 seem pretty realistic, kind of splashing all over the place. Um, but I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump everything. And then you'll see the water level here slowly going down. The death marker slowly going down. Once it gets to 1.0, you're going to start seeing land over here. Right, because now it's drained lower than this. And then that will affect this area over here because it's not nearby water. To irrigate this land right look at that so now all this area is dead and i'll say right here this drying out tree will die and so it's 13 days for pines um but other things a little bit different like let's see this one here it's watering alive okay um now given that it's wide open i think let me see is that zero so this water should be pouring out unless 
Do I have a... Oh, I have a levy at the bottom. Okay, so that's not going to empty out completely. Um, but, I mean, that's pretty low. <laughs> that's pretty low. It's not going to last for sure. Uh, let me see. I think empty storage. Let me empty storage and all these. And then that'll get all these pumps working overtime. There we go. Water. The ability to be empty does not accept new goods. There we go. Um, let me see. Oh, man. Migrate population. Um, that's how you move people from one district to another. Uh, let me see. I kind of covered just about everything. Now it's just about just like looking at just, uh, just I guess, just playing the game, really. And that's something I'm going to do in a Let's Play. I think that if you're interested in, in, in Colony Builders, you probably know what decision you're going to make about this game now. Um, it is, in my opinion, like probably one of the better city builders that I've played in a long time. Um, you know what I'll do? Just kind of speed this up. I'm going to delete these things. Again, no resources can come back to you. So there you go. Now that's going to empty out everything. Um, it, it, it is very, very good for an early access title. Uh, like Banish was really good when it first came out and, you know, we ended up playing the shit out of it. Uh, see, there's some water stuck back there. So what I could do is I could take this and I'm going to just going to, I'm going to break some hearts here doing this, but I'm going to delete this. And what's happening is it says here, it says there's no road connected to this thing, so you can't use it. I'm going to delete these dams here. That's all. Now the water's going to come pouring out. You're going to see it flush right on out the door. The water wheel's kind of working for a minute, but now the water's too low. You can see it's getting... There, there it goes. And then, boof, gone. And then here it goes. The whole land will just... Oh, there's a tiny little square of water right here. <gasps> Keeping all of this going. How funny is that? Huh. Dude. There is an item that lets you move water, right? Uh, it's like a pump. It's a dump, right? Water dump. So you could take one of these. I'm just going to unlock it here. Uh, and I could go, okay, I want to put it here and have water dump out, you know, dump right in here. So you get explosives or something like that. And then, or you, or actually not even that, don't you get explosives. Like apparently you could just build a levee. Um, yeah, it's, it's still there. Yeah. Just put a bunch of, uh, dams around it and then just pour water into it. Huh? I'm gonna keep that in mind. That's a lot of irrigation out of one tile. But if I zoom all the way in, it's probably draining pretty quickly. I mean, it's pretty high right now. How funny is that? Yeah, it's going down. You can just see it. You can actually watch it slowly go down. It's pretty crazy. Um, so everything is drying out. Everything is dying. You can't plant anything new. You can see the berries will die in eight days. So they'll die before the end of the drought. This is going to die in one day. So that's going to, the food supply is going to just basically disappear. There's no expiration on, on food that's been picked or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, trees, we see this tree, uh, 15 days for this guy, um, the maple. So yeah, man, like... You once 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 you run out of water and you have like so many days left in a drought, like you're in trouble. You're in serious, serious, serious trouble. Um <laughs> Cause this is like this is seriously the beginning of the end. And so you end up thinking, okay, well do I just watch them die and just kind of see what I can make diff do different, or do you just load a save? And just play thankfully, it's by default, you can load up an autosave and go back in time and see, okay, 12 9, that was four days ago. I go back then and it's like, okay, that was before I made like 15 critical errors <laughs> and so i could go back here and then use this as my new starting point and i've done that a lot on this the diorama map um yeah here we go before the drought oh it just drought just started so yeah this would be a good place to go back and do some do-overs if you don't make it to the end of the drought or you go back a little bit more thank you for autosave um but yeah, this has been a good challenge uh playing diorama or playing playing this little diorama map means that you can't really go anywhere you're limited on space right uh and also playing the iron teeth so this new uh, they're not necessarily more difficult or anything they're different um uh and then hard mode really really made this game like a plus in my book I, initially i think when i finished my stream uh my stream on the other save i think my my opinion of it was you know like it's pretty good but it's got some issues and you know i feel like i've kind of finished with the game and everything but then then i turned around and I did hard mode and it's like okay the fucking struggle is real <laughs> the game the game has answered my answered answered my call <laughs> and put me on the ropes man it's really good stuff so this is timberborn uh i am going to sit down and start putting together a series for you guys i know you guys love those things uh we'll probably do hard mode uh, and I, I haven't decided which faction to go with. I haven't really played around with the, um, with the engine yet. Like, as you saw, I didn't even know it took gears. Um, so I'd like to actually go that route and try that. 
and I do like the breeding pod thing. Uh, but at the same time, you know, the other faction has some pretty good, some pretty good, um, uh, uh, like cool features that only they have. Like the, the, the beehive, the beehive meta, like I want to get all on that. Put beehives all over the place and let them like, you know, fertilize or whatever they do, magic, apply magic to your, to your crops. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's Timberborn. Available right now on Steam, early access, 24 99 Well worth that, even in its current state. Looking forward to updates from these guys. Um, I'm looking forward to hopping in and playing uh, playing for you guys and put you guys to sleep. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike B. A.K. Phony, and shout out to Corpse, a.k.a. Corpse. He's editing these things for you guys taking a huge load off my shoulders he's editing and he's uh putting the update uh putting the videos up on on youtube and getting them scheduled out and everything for me and it's really really helping me yes i'm paying the guy um so yeah i mean if you want to help me pay him you could just click on that patreon link at the bottom and uh that'll help a lot <laughs> thank you so much for watching again mike bak phony timberborn beaver builder simulator have a good one. Bye.